dimension is 120 millimeters. This one here is 180. <coughs> this one here is 30. This one here is the same as 30 mm. And then this one here is 40 mm. <coughs> and the question here is to find the <coughs> Ix bar and Iy bar. So when I put a bar, which means x bar and y bar, we're <coughs> placing an x axis and y axis at the centroid of this area. So, um, first of all, this thing is symmetric, so it's going to cut right in the middle. And <coughs> your x axis and x bar will be same. Then the centroid, let's say, comes out here. And this C, <coughs> then you could place an axis here. That's going to be Y bar, and <coughs> you place another axis here. We call this as Y. So for this problem, because of symmetry, the X axis and the X bar axis they will coincide, but the <coughs> Y axis and the Y bar axis will not coincide. And it also means that the centroid is really being at x bar and 0. It has to be on this line. So it should be on x axis. That means the y coordinate must go to 0. So this distance here is going to be x bar. <coughs> so. <coughs> As the question is to find the centroid, the location of centroid, so you know how much is the x bar, then we also need to find the inertias about the x axis and y axis, then you can go back and you can find the inertia about the x bar axis and y bar axis. <coughs> now, <coughs> before we proceed, as we said that i x bar, the one we are really looking for, is going to be the same as Ix, so the two axes coincide. Now I, y bar should be equal to inertia by the y axis plus area cross section times x bar square. Or do this one. So your I Y bar will be I Y minus A X bar square. So <coughs> that's going to be the equation number one, which gives us the I X bar, and that's going to be the equation number two, which gives us the I Y bar. Okay. And the question is how do we really go about finding I X as well as I Y? So let me redraw the figure again. What I could do is I could, I could break this up in three rectangles. You take one rectangle here, let's call this as one. We take another one here, <coughs> we call this as two. We take another one here, we call this as three. 
So, if you break this up into three of these rectangles, then your Ix will be Ix1 with inertia of this rectangle about x axis plus Ix2 plus Ix3. We basically add the <coughs> inertias of each of these rectangles about the x-axis. Now, <coughs> because of symmetry, see this has the same geometry as well as the same distance from x-axis as this one. So, <coughs> Ix1 will be <coughs> same as Ix3. That is said because of due to symmetry. <coughs> now, if I need Ix1, that means I want to find the inertia of this rectangle about this axis. Now, to do this, <coughs> we don't have any formula. I mean, we know the inertia of the rectangle was a centroid, there we could find that will be BHQ over 12, but then we need the parallaxis theorem to transform the inertia to about this axis. So, it is going to be two steps. <coughs> the first step is we place an axis here, that is the centroid of rectangle 1. <coughs> so, that is C1 and the distance of C1 between x axis um, <coughs> see this is 18 first of all we change this to centimeters so you have 12 here you have 3 here you have <coughs> 3 here you have 4 centimeters here and <coughs> that's 18 centimeters so, distance between here and here was 18 minus 3 minus 3 or <coughs> 12, 12 centimeters. So, this half of this is going to be 6. This one is known as 3. So, half of this is going to be 1.5. So, the total distance from here to here is 7.5 centimeters. So, the axis by which you want to find the moment inertia is located at a distance 7.5 from the centroid of the first rectangle. Now, <coughs> the inertia of rectangle 1 about this axis will be <coughs> 1 12th, then you have the height as <coughs> the width is 12, height is 3, so 1 12th 3 cube. Plus, you have to add the other part of this, I mean, so you're going to take the area which is 12 <coughs> times 3, that's the A, multiplied by the square of the distance between those two axes. <coughs> you see, I mean, that, I mean, that's the tricky part, that is to find inertia of rectangle 1 about this axis. It's not a straightforward it's, it's not a straightforward process. First you need to find the inertia of this rectangle about an axis which is going through the centroid. That's the step one which was done right here. <coughs> then since that's not what you need, you need the inertia of this about this so, you do step 2 and you use parallel axis theorem. <coughs> so, it is a two step process and if you do go through this, it, your numbers should come out to be uh, 2052 centimeters to the power 4. And that is the same as Ix3. I mean, you could try it, you could try the same thing for Ix3, it will, it will come out to be the same. Now, let us look at Ix2. 
we are looking at this rectangle the centroid is at C2 which is located right at the x-axis. What another way of saying is that the centroid of the rectangle 2 is on x-axis. So that makes life a little simpler because this is simply going to be 1 12. The <coughs> width is going to be 4 and <coughs> the total height for that is the bottom is the same. You have 6 on the other side. So it will be 12 <coughs> cube. And if you go to the number is going to come out to be <coughs> 576 to the power 4. So I can go right back here. You got the first number as 252, the second number is 576, the third number is <coughs> 2052, it all adds up to 4680 centimeters to the power 4. And that's half a solution. Now we need the, to do the same thing with I Y. So I Y is going to be I Y one, I Y two, and I Y three. Now what's I Y one? Okay, you're looking at this rectangle, you're looking at this axis. So the formula which you should use is one third. You need the B, which is three. You need the H and H was 12 <coughs> so that's the first one the second one again you're going to use the formula with the third <coughs> the P for that is